evening in a lightweight bout is making his debut is Anthony Romero. And you see Team Ascension, Chris Bonfoco in his corner. And the Canadians always come to fight. Always. Always, always come to fight. There's no doubt about it. They are one of the best teams to come down from anywhere outside the Midwest area to come here to the great state of Ohio and always, like you said, put on a, for lack of a better term, heck of a performance. And this is a kid I am excited to see make his amateur debut. 18 years old, but was a black belt in Taekwondo when he was 11 and has been with Team Ascension since then and has tra transitioned to train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Muay Thai. And his coach... Chris Bonfoco says we don't generally start the grappling, but we usually finish it. And I think that that's where he's going to be comfortable is striking and then maybe if he needs to get the fight to the ground. Absolutely. And I do want to uh, break the news. I don't know if any of you guys have heard yet, but uh, another one of his teammates, uh, Jason, I'm sorry, Dalton Brady was supposed to fight tonight in the Bantamweight title fight against Jason Alexander. But that fight, as of earlier this morning has been scratched and will not take place. And unfortunate because that was that was going to be one hell of a fight between I think two of the best 135 amateurs, maybe even in the country right now. I couldn't agree more even with that. Even though Dalton Brady's not even from this country, he's but he's not. in the country right he's, now because he's, he's in yeah. he's in Anthony Romero's corner right now. And this is a kid 18 years old, you're going to see he's comfortable because he has competed a lot. And I don't know if there's necessarily going to be that competition dump here. I just, uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard, but Chris Bonfalco just walked by our announce table, and he said, watch this kid's performance. If Chris says that, you know it's going to be a good performance, and I'm now excited to see what this kid has to bring to the table. Usually if Chris Bonfalco says that something, and if he's confident, I mean, he's always confident, but when he says stuff like that, it kind of makes you pay attention. And, I'm excited for this for this guy, and as you see, Chris Wolf here in the boxing shorts. Even though he's a wrestler, he said he's been wrestling his entire life. His four-year-old, his brother is four years older than him, got him into wrestling, and you see with that big black eye over there. Both of these guys, coincidentally, took this fight on Thursday. Wow! This was a fight that was added to the card very last minute. A couple of fights, other fights fell through. Both of these guys were added to the fight card last minute, and got to give it up to both of these guys. Anthony Romero making his debut. Chris Wolf only 1-0 to have the guts to step in on one day notice, two days notice, absolutely, and fight in front of a huge crowd here at IT Fight Series. Kudos to matchmaker Aaron Garrett for putting this fight together. Uh, I'm excited because, as already mentioned, Nick or um, Anthony Romero fights out of Team Ascension. But I also do want to note the fact that. Uh, Chris Wolf has not fought. His one and only fight was September of 2012. So it's been nearly three years since he stepped the foot in the cage. So you can almost say like he's stepping back into the cage for the first time because it's been such a long layoff. Referee Todd Augusta is the third man in the cage. Anthony Romero in the black. Chris Wolf in the gold, trimmed in black. As we are underway here in our fourth amateur fight here at IT Fight Series 33. And you see Wolf already dancing around the outside. Romero takes center of the cage. Very interesting and technique here from Chris. Yeah, Wolf has his hands spread apart, and that's. I'm expecting a right hand to come right down the middle here. Ooh, nice takedown from Anthony there. Yeah, body lock, body lock, inside trip takedown. Romero on the top. In Chris Wolf's full guard here. Wolf opens up his guard. Passes the half guard already. Wolf has 
Anthony Romero's neck here against the cage. I'm not sure if he's looking to try to finish this guillotine or just use that to get back to his feet. I can't tell if he came into the cage with it or not, but it does look like Chris Wood is possibly cut on his he, right eye or yeah, that's possibly a black eye. Yeah, he has a, had a pretty nasty black eye. I saw him walking around with it in the back, and I said, you must be a fighter. <laughs> if not, he must have got beat up at the concession booth. And Romero... Finishes another double leg as he is still in Chris Wolf's half guard and looking to get that underhook on the right side, maybe pass here, maybe looking for full mount. Wolf looks to buck here, and actually Romero tri trapped his arm. It's a little bit of a scramble there. Romero ends up on top. Chris Wolf looking for the outside or inside single. Nice hammer fist to the side of the head of Chris Wolf from Anthony Romero. And I saw it as soon as Chris Bonfoco did. There was a dark choke there, but Chris Wolf back to his feet. Wolf now against the cage. Has a over under. And Romero now on his back. Chris Wolf inside control. When Nathan Romero went down to the ground there, and I kind of gassed, he landed face first onto the mat. Not gonna lie, that probably had to hurt there, David. A couple short punches there from Chris Wolf. And yeah, landing face first on any mat never feels good. Nice Romero transition to get Wolf back into his full guard. And Wolf's pants are falling down here. You get a nice view from the camera guy here. And Romero working the high guard. Maybe looking to swing around for either a triangle or an arm bar. And yeah, now it looks like he's maybe going to try to transition to that arm bar. Oh, and it looks like he might have it here. He hasn't even grabbed the arm yet, but put it in the perfect left. position. A couple of knees to the body there from Chris Wolf and Romero. Yeah, I, don't I don't think he's going to get it. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to get it, but a nice... Nice job there. Really relaxed, comfortable grappling from Anthony Romero and a lot more poised than you would expect to see from an 18-year-old fighter making his amateur MMA debut. Absolutely. You can see Chris kind of, uh, he's breathing more than Anthony here, which kind of says a lot about, you know, Anthony and his ability, his cardio, his training, you know, only being 18 years old coming to this fight. And a little bit of a delay there from Chris Wolf's corner, Johnny uh, Johnny Connor, to get into the cage. But Chris Bonfoco already, as soon as the round basically ended, he was in the cage. As you see him wearing an Anthony the Genius Romero t-shirt. Now, in between the rounds here. Amateurs get a minute and a half, 90 seconds in between rounds to kind of recover, listen to instruction from their corner. Uh, pros, on the other hand, only get 60 seconds, one minute. Uh, this time is very crucial to the, the younger fighters, you know, especially in this case, Anthony making his first fight to uh, take in as much breather as they can and kind of, you know, take in what just happened. And that was a close round one. How would you score that round? Um... I think I would have to give it to Anthony, you know, because he went, he closed the round out with a, a submission attempt. We really didn't see much from uh, Chris as far as submissions or looking to finish the fight, but he did land some great strikes throughout the first round. Yeah, he was mostly defensive in the first round. Oh, nice leg kick there from Anthony. Yeah. Landed perfectly, and you saw that Another. inside leg kick there from Romero as he's, he's switching stances. And, man, he looks comfortable in the striking range. Ooh, another nice inside leg kick. Yeah, and that one, those are the snapping ones. The ones that you don't, the ones that aren't loud are the ones that are the worst. But Chris Wolf actually ends up on top here. Again, now still in side control, and Romero looking to regain guard here, but Wolf has his neck. Romero, it's a couple shots there. It looks like Anthony might be giving up his back to Chris Wolf. Yeah, I thought he was going to roll him there for a second, but Chris Wolf just stuffed it. And Romero, again, maybe looking for another arm bar here off the back As door. As he gets his, his right leg in, which it looks like he's Does attempting to. Does he have a knee bar? 
Can't see if he has an. I thought no. he had a. No. No knee bar. And Chris Bonfoco tell him to work the triangle, and he immediately throws up the high guard. Wolf looking for the slam. And Romero now has his leg. Scramble here. And Romero back to his feet. And Wolf looking to take his back. Nice kind of uh, semi takedown there from Chris Wolf. It didn't go his way. Nice scramble there from both guys. Romero ends up on top. This is a pretty even matchup here between two really young fighters. Two guys, again, who took this fight on just two days' notice here. And this is a huge crowd in front of, you know, over 1,000 people here at IT Fight Series. It's got to be tough to go out there for your first or in Wolf's case, you're just your second fight. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but with that being said, it doesn't seem like Anthony is nervous at all. He's, it seems like he's very calm. He's collective, listening to his corner. Uh, he's, he's very strategic in what he's doing. And now Wolf has Anthony Romero's neck with full guard. Not sure if it's completely under the chin yet. We can't really tell from our position. And Romero looking to, he's out now. Good job pushing on that left bicep of Tony Wolf. Work that body, work that body. You know, three minutes isn't a lot to do a lot of uh, strategy maneuver in the case that Anthony looks like he's trying to do here, trying to work his way into a better position, looking for that submission. And as I say that, the 10 second bell just sounded, uh, which will bring a close to the second round of the fight. Wolf made it back to his feet there. Another close round one. And you gotta figure that both of these guys Neither one of these guys can be confident, I think, that they won either round. So. No, not at all. You're right. And if I was a judge, I might have to give the second round to Chris Wolf here. So with that being said, each fighter has one round a piece of my books. So third round is up for taking. Either fighter could win. What would you do if you were Chris Wolf? Honestly, I think really more of the same. He doesn't really seem to be super comfortable in the striking. He, was, he has been you know, successful in being able to take him down, work for position. But again, that's with the wrestling background, it's hard for a guy to really transition to learn more submissions, to learn the striking. And in wrestling, it's a good base, but you have to add more on top of that. So I think really in this round, he needs to just work the position, try to get takedowns, and just be on top and be dominant because 90% of the time, if you're on top, you're winning the fight, whether, you know, no matter what the guy on the ground is, on the bottom is doing. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more with that. And uh, for those of you joining us now, we are in between the second and third round of our fourth fight of the evening between Anthony Romero, who is in our uh, corner on the screen to your left, standing up in the Black Valley Tudor shorts. He's taking on Chris Wolf in the yellow shorts, of the yellow boxing shorts. And we are now about to start the third and final round of this featherweight contest. I'm sorry, lightweight contest. And like I said, Romero still looks incredibly comfortable standing. I'm surprised he hasn't thrown more strikes in this fight as Wolf just again rushes in for that takedown. And they're in the corner here, right in front of our broadcast position. Nice trip takedown there from Chris Wolf ends up on top again in Romero's half guard. Romero looking to sneak out the back door here. He's trying to put his right leg over to get the hook in, to get the back of Chris Wolf. Now he's using the cage to get better leverage. And he's Romero back to his back. feet and looking for a suplex here. Gets it on. And interesting that he was looking to actually maybe mount there from that position, even though he had his back. He now has that left hook in, throwing some punches, trying to lock in the right hook. If he's able to get that right hook in, his right, his right left foot in the hook position, he might be able to go for the rear neck. Both hooks here. in here now, looking to flatten him out. He has, it looks like the, he has the arms under the armpits here. Not going to be able to finish the fight here. Want to see him maybe throw some punches here from this position to open Chris Wolf up. Correct. Because right now he's not throwing nothing. Oh. He's able to get that left hand underneath the chin of Chris Wolf, looks like. 
I think the biggest thing here with the young fighter, Anthony Romero, is putting it all together. Right. Correct. He has the striking, he has the grappling, but I don't know if he's really put it all together in terms of combining his striking, using his striking to open up his grappling. And I think right now, at least, he's probably losing this round here against Chris Wolf, and he may be, at this point, losing this fight. Uh, that's correct. And kind of go back to what you're saying about not putting everything together. Uh, we got to remember this is his first fight, so maybe he's just got the nerves. Maybe he does have the ability to put everything together, but being, like I said, this is his first fight, just a little bit nervous and a little bit more uh, And throws reluctant. up the legs again here looking for that arm bar. He has the time he to finish have this fight. He may have it here. Uh, looks like Chris Wolf. Actually, he does still have it. Chris is holding on to his hand, so, he, so Anthony's not able to extend the arm. And Romero looking to come out the back door here and extend that right arm. There you go. That's what he needs to do is use that punch to set up his striking. And still attacking is Anthony Romero from the bottom. Chris Wolf on the top here in the gold shorts. With ten seconds left to see if he has. I'm not sure if he has enough time to finish it. I don't think he's gonna be able to finish it with ten seconds left. A couple punches here from the bottom. And it's right here in front of us. And those are some heavy, heavy punches there. Yeah, dude. great job by a couple of young fighters. Great back and forth fight here. Amateur lightweights again. These guys took this fight on two days' notice. Uh, you know, I don't know how to score this fight. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm going to be just as shocked as uh, everybody here and all those listening to the broadcast who takes this fight. This is definitely one where I would not want to be a judge. They have the hardest job in the building outside of the ring card girls. Um, I think Anthony Romero, I gave him the, the uh, first round and the third round. You know, just because I want to argue with you, David, I'm going to say Chris Wolf takes this fight. I'm going to give him the second and the third round. Let's see who wins between us two. I think it's all going to come down to that third round close fight. Yes, that, that third round is going to be pivotal. Um, it was nice to see Anthony kind of, you know, close the fight out with the armbar submission. Will that be enough? And we'll Juan, have to find out. We have a split decision. The longer it takes, that's a split decision. That is a split decision in the works. Hmm, interesting. Been through a lot of fights. But yeah, the longer it takes, Rick Tom's making his way to the cage and we'll get the winner here. All right, folks, let's see what the official announcement is. All right, my fans, we do have a split decision. Judge number one scored about 30 27 for Romero. Judge number two scores the foul on the fight 29 28 for Wolves. Judge number three scores the foul 30 27. Wow. Two judges give him 30 27. One judge gives 29 28 to Wolf. I don't know if I agree with that. I think best case scenario either way will be 29 28 from either fighter. I don't see how all three rounds go to Anthony.